Hello dear students, welcome to the first session. In this session, we will start with a new chapter which is Carbon and its Compound. It is your chapter 4. This chapter is very vast but at the same time it is very important. It will form a foundation for your organic chemistry. Chemistry is divided into three branches which are physical, inorganic and organic. In physical chemistry, mostly theories and technologies of physics are applied to chemistry. In inorganic chemistry, it is basically the study of all compounds except carbon and its compound. Organic chemistry, it is purely the study of carbon and its compound. Carbon being so versatile, it was felt the need that a separate branch should be created which will deal only with the study of carbon and its compound which was known as organic chemistry. So in this chapter, we will basically be studying about organic chemistry. Carbon is represented by the symbol capital C. Its atomic number is 6 and atomic mass is 12. If you have gone through the element table which I gave you previously, atomic number and atomic mass will not be a problem by now. Now let us see the electronic configuration of carbon. We know that there are four shells. This is the nucleus. First shell, second shell, third shell and the fourth shell. The first shell is designated with the letter K. Second L, third M and the fourth as N. So when we see the electronic configuration of carbon, K, L, M, N. Now, this entire shell come with its own sort of rules, such as in K shell, only two electrons can be accommodated, L shell, eight electrons, M shell, 18 electrons, and N shell, 32 electrons. These are the fixed number of electrons each shell can accommodate in it. This shell cannot accommodate more than 2, nor this can accommodate more than 8. This also cannot accommodate more than 18 and this also cannot accommodate more than 32. That means in this shell, the electrons which can be accommodated is 1, 2. Here, 1, 2, 8. Here, 1, 2, 18. And in this shell, 1, 2, 32. Now, when we do the electronic configuration for carbon, as we know that in K shell, only two electrons can be accommodated. So, out of six, two electrons will go in the K shell. Now, out of six, two electrons has been accommodated in the K shell. The remaining number of electron is four. Now, we can see here that in the L shell, eight electrons can be accommodated. So, there is no problem in putting up 4 electrons in the L shell. So, the remaining 4 electrons will go in the L shell. Now, 2 and 4. Altogether, 6 electrons has been accommodated in the 2 shells. So, now, since carbon has 2 electrons accommodated in the 2 shells, so what will happen is that M and N shell, they are not coming to play. So, we can omit these two shells. So for carbon, we see that there are only two shells. And now remember that this last shell in which the electron has been accommodated is known as valence shell or outermost shell. And the electron which goes and occupy the last shell, it is known as valence electron.
you have to keep this in mind this is very important valence shell that is the last shell valence electron that is the last electron whenever a compound forms a bond only the last shell participate the first shell has no role to play whenever it is forming a bond every compound only the last electron will participate in bond formation now every compound needs to be stable so there are certain rules for the stability of an atom or stability of a compound there is a rule which is known as octet rule which means that for a compound on for an atom to be stable it needs to have eight electrons in its outermost shell here we see that there are only four electrons so that means that it is not stable so it needs to have eight electrons to be stable how will they acquire eight electrons either by sharing of electrons or gaining of electrons from any other atoms this is how they will acquire stability and this process of acquiring stability is known as octet rule once again let me repeat what is octet rule octet rule means any compound or any atom to be stable it needs to have eight electrons in its outermost shell if it has one two three four it is not stable so we need to make it stable either by gain of electron or by losing of electron now octet rule means there will be eight electrons there is also one exceptional case which is known as duplex in some atoms they cannot have eight electrons so in that case this duplet rule says that if they do not have eight electrons in the outermost shell in order to be stable they need to have two electrons and this is applicable mostly only for hydrogen hydrogen we know that they have only one electron so in order to attain stability hydrogen needs two electron if they have two electrons they will be stable so this is known as the duplet rule and this is applicable only for hydrogen all the other elements apart from hydrogen they have the tendency to acquire eight electrons in their outermost shell now let us see how can this carbon acquire stability as we know that to be stable it needs to have eight electrons now Remember that the bond formed by carbon compounds are known as covalent bond. There are two types of bond which can be formed. One is ionic and the other is covalent. Ionic bond is formed by the permanent transfer of electron. That means permanent. permanent transfer of electrons electrons can be symbolized as e minus however covalent bond is formed by only sharing of electrons ionic bond will be formed by permanent transfer of electron once it gives it electron it is there is no taking back of the electron permanent transfer of electron happens in ionic bond ionic we can just imagine that they will have some charges so upon transferring of electrons it will acquire a positive charge mostly you will see that ionic compounds have positive and negative charge that means ionic bond will have charges covalent bond since it is forming by the sharing of electrons it does not have any charge so logically ionic bond is much more stronger covalent bond is quite weaker now let us see why carbon compounds cannot form covalent ionic bond carbon compounds are said to form only covalent bond why is that carbon cannot form ionic bond now let us see that carbon has valency 4 that means it has four outermost electron so in order to attain stability let's see the electronic configuration once again 
of carbon K and L K shell two electrons L shell four electrons in order to attain stability as I just mentioned it needs to have eight electrons here otherwise two electrons so in order to have eight electrons in the outermost shell it needs to accept four more electrons from some other elements or atoms so if it accepts four electrons from some other element or atom carbon will acquire a negative charge now you see here if it accepts four electrons from some other elements all together it will have 10 electrons now the nucleus of carbon is not very strong to hold eight electrons in the second shell also two electrons so all together they will have how many electrons 10 electrons however carbon nucleus it is made up to hold only six electrons it does not have the tendency to hold 10 electrons so if it accepts four electrons from some other elements or atoms as a result together they will have 10 electrons which is not possible for the nucleus of carbon to hold so this is not applicable that means accepting of electron is not possible in case of carbon now let us see what if it gives away its four electrons now let us see once again electronic configuration k and l as i said there are two stability rule one is octate and the other is duplet so if carbon loses its four electrons it will be remaining with only two electrons so that means it will attend duplet but carbon does not have <clears throat> that much energy that it can donate its four electron it needs huge amount of energy to donate four electrons at once which carbon does not have since carbon does not have that much energy to donate its four electron at once this case is also not applicable in case of carbon so we can see here that in case of carbon donating and accepting of electron permanently is not possible so how can carbon attain stability <coughs> carbon attains stability by sharing of electrons sharing of electrons will result in the formation of a covalent bond now let us see how covalent bond and sharing of electron is done by taking some examples of some other elements let us first take example of hydrogen these are all diatomic molecules which will be taking diatomic molecules means hydrogen oxygen nitrogen which are present in di form that means which are present as two subscript let us see first for hydrogen hydrogen we know that it has if we see the electronic configuration of hydrogen we will see that k l it has only one electron in the k shell so in order to be stable hydrogen needs one more electron now we have two hydrogen atoms each of them has one electron electrons can be donated by a dot or x it's all up to you but if you are denoting one electron as dot for one entire element make sure that you donate all the electrons with a dot now this electron this hydrogen has just one electron this hydrogen also has just one electron so they are not stable and as i said for hydrogen it needs to attain duplet that means it needs to have two electrons to be stable so through mutual understanding and this hydrogen and this hydrogen they try to form friendship so this hydrogen convince the other hydrogen i will share one of my electron with you and at the same time i want you to share your one electron with me so that both of us attain stability so this hydrogen and this hydrogen through mutual understanding they agree to share their electrons so this hydrogen tells this hydrogen okay you take my one of my electron 
so this hydrogen takes they are just sharing they are not taking away permanently so this hydrogen agrees to share its electron now this hydrogen it has two electron which means that it has attained stability now this hydrogen also needs to become stable so this hydrogen tells this hydrogen you also you can share one of my electron to attain stability so this hydrogen also shares its electron now you can see that both the hydrogen have attained stability this hydrogen also has two electrons this hydrogen also has two electrons remember that in covalent bond there is no permanent transfer of electron there is just sharing they share in such a way that this hydrogen also does not lose its electron this hydrogen also will not lose its electron and as we know that in one pair of shoes there are two shoes similarly in one pair of electron there are two electrons so here we can see that it is one pair of electron and one pair of electron will give rise to a single bond so here the bond formation between hydro two hydrogen that means it will be hydrogen will be bonded with another hydrogen with a single bond this bond is known as single covalent bond Here we have seen the formation of a single covalent bond. Now let us see example of another element or atom.